Hello and welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. My name is Yoris and today I'm going to tell you why you should avoid buying synthetic ETFs. So you have actually two different kind of ETFs. So the two main classes that you have in ETFs is either a physical ETF or a synthetical ETF. And what does a physical ETF actually do? Well, they offer exposure to the performance of an index by holding an index underlying stocks so you are directly investing into the index which it says it is doing while synthetic ETFs they capture the return of an index using swaps and in this case a swap counterparty pledges to deliver the performance of an index for a variable spread and the spread is paid by the ETF and the first type of physical ETF is the fully replicated one and you know I like fully replicated ones and also the sampling types which I'm going to mention next. So when we talk about fully replicated uh, ETFs they attempt to track the performance of the target index by investing in all or a substantial part of their assets in the stocks that make up the index. And they are then also holding those stocks in approximately the same proportion as it's weighing in the index itself. So when you look at the figure depicting in that, you can more or less look at it like that. So you have the index and when you look at the fund, it looks exactly the same. And when it says it's a substantial part, so sometimes the lost percentages of the index the, the last few stocks, they are harder to, to buy or to trade in and they leave sometimes those stocks out of the fund. So they aren't looking at uh, picking certain stocks out. No, they, it's just the last ones which are harder to trade or are less liquid that they are not actually including into the fund. So you can then say here you can... Um, depict this one as uh, orange, uh, dark orange, and leave that one out here. But most of the time it's more or less just the same as the index. And then you have the sampling ones, and yeah, in counterpart to the fully replicated ones here, there is only a subset of the parent index securities included into the ETF, and the true sampling ETFs they leave out a certain type of uh, stocks so for example you can have uh, ETFs that say we exclude REITs and in that regard you have the benchmark index which includes the REITs but then the fund they exclude those REITs and uh, they just take the rest of, of the, the benchmark and yeah it's mostly also mentioned then in the name so excluding REITs or EXL reads so you know when you know the the index that when you leave those reads out that you have the complete composition of the fund and then you have the optimization and on just ETF they are also called sampling ETFs because they do more or less the same but not exactly so in this case they uh, also hold only a portion of, of the benchmarks constituents but they they try to yeah pick the constituents more regarding to what they like so when they say okay we we have the MSCI world but we look at the quality dividends then they exclude some some of the stocks that are in the MSCI world because they they don't abide to the to the certain standards that they want regarding quality dividends and after they excluded those they say okay our fund is uh, now composed like that you can have the same with ESG ETFs so they they want to be more social correct environmentally correct and they exclude stocks that have a lower score than uh, than what they want and 
yeah, you have done the same picture. So these these stocks they they don't reach the the value that they want for ESG norms, and those that uh, are still yellow they do, and afterwards they they say okay, our fund consists of these ESG stocks that we selected out. So in this regard, I like physical ETFs a lot. But of course, synthetical ETFs they also exist and. One of the most funded uh, uh, used models is the unfunded model, and it's a bit more complicated to explain. But under the unfunded model, the ETF uses investors' cash to buy a reference, also known as a substitute basket, and in return, the swap provider pledges to provide the performance of the chosen index to the ETF. And meanwhile, the ETF provides the return of the reference basket to the swap provider. So the access performance of the reference basket is being pledged towards the swap counterparty. And that's really important that you know that. So most of the time, the reference basket, it's uh, you need to find it out what it is. But most of the time, those those stocks that are in it perform most of the time, not always, but most of the time they perform better than the underlying index that they promised in, in the synthetic ETF. So actually the swap counterparties are the ones that are benefiting from such a construction. And you as an investor, you are getting what you are promised to to receive but there are other parties that are yeah benefiting more than you and then you have the funded model where you can actually be more screwed because under the fully funded model the ETF transfers investors cash to the counterparty and they provide then the performance of the underlying index so just like in the unfunded model but to mitigate the risk there the counterparty posts collateral with an independent third party such as a custodian so in this model you have the collateral pool which is outside the counterparty and also outside the synthetic ETF so when something goes wrong with the counterparties the collateral pool is not included into the synthetic ETF and normally the collateral pool will go to the synthetic ETF so that you have rights uh, towards what is in it but it can be that something goes completely wrong and then yeah you are completely screwed as an investor so the construction here is completely the same more or less completely the same as long everything goes well you will get return of the index that was promised and the collateral pool the yeah the the gains that the collateral pool makes is not going immediately to the swap counterparty so in that regard it is a, a bit better than the unfunded model but yeah I'm definitely not a fan of synthetical ETFs and here you have an, uh, an example of uh, an accumulative uh, ETF that is a swap based ETF so CN1 or CN1G from Amundi MSCI Nordic Usage ETF so the currency on the 6 is the euro you have the unfunded uh, model swap based ETF there is 273 million under management in this fund so actually quite a lot excuse me and the uh, Amundi MSCI Nordic Usage ETF they seek to track the MSCI Nordic countries index and those include the Denmark, Norway, Finland and Sweden lands. So normally you 
would then think, okay, I'm investing into stocks that uh, are from Denmark, Norway, Finland or Sweden, but nothing is less true. So you are not investing in Volvo or anything like that. You are actually investing in 47 companies in total into the reference basket. And the the main one is Microsoft, 7.12%, so USA. L'Oreal from France, 6.49%. Company Saint-Gobain as well from France, 6.22%. NVIDIA, 6.18%. Eli Lilly, 5.58%. So USA, USA, USA. Nike, 5.22%. Total Energies from France, once again, 4.28%. And Ferrari from Italy, 3.92%. So 45%, these eight companies already make up 45% of the reference basket. And all the companies, all the 47 companies are non-Nordic companies. It's incredible. And then another one, you have the Amundi MSCI World 2 Usage ETF distribution. I think it's a world record for European ETF. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six ticker symbols. But as you know, with the easing code, you will always uh, be able to find it. Although I don't want you to find it, but that's something else. So the total expense ratio is 0.30%. The currency on the 6 is US dollar and the dividend currency is also US dollar. And they only pay once a year. It used to be twice a year, so half yearly, but they change it to once a year. And I think that's also uh, that has also to do with the fact that it's a unfunded swap based ETF. So it's uh, way harder to, to pay out dividends than of course. And there is 6.2 billion euro under management for this ETF. It's unbelievable, but swap based ETFs are really yeah, liked by, uh, by uh, investors apparently. I don't know why, but it's, it's, uh, sometimes it's, it's way above my head. And the Amundi MSCI World 2 usage ETF distribution seeks to track the MSCI World Index. And the MSCI World Index tracks stocks from 23 developed countries worldwide. But look at this. So in the reference basket, there are 162 companies, a lot from the USA, that I can say from uh, the beginning. And then uh, also from France, you already see them here. So it's also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I oh, also put uh, the first eight here. And 162 companies in the reference basket compared to 1,512 in the MSCI index. So you are way less diversified, actually. So you will get a return of the MSCI world index. But yeah, underlying you are only exposed to 162 companies in the reference basket compared to 1,512 in the MSCI index. So Amazon, Alphabet, Apple, Meta, Nvidia, AMD, BMP, uh, BMP Paribas, Fortis and Total Energy, they, are, they aren't bad stocks, not at all. I'm not saying that, but those eight already constitute 39.7% of the reference basket and you are actually not investing into the MSCI world you are investing into 162 companies that are perhaps also in the MSCI index uh, they are but yeah you you get what I mean so the reference basket or collateral basket when it's a funded uh, swap based ETF composition is usually not always different from the actual index so you as an investor should check that and whether or not you agree with the fact that you want to invest in the ETF still after you know in what they actually invest their, their your money towards 
Then, in case of uh, funded swap ETFs, the collateral basket is not even in your own ETF, but with a third party, so also remember that, so you take an extra risk there. And who is getting the difference between the index and the performance of reference basket or collateral basket? So, in case of the reference basket, it's definitely the, third, uh, the, the counterparties that receive it, in the collateral basket it's not that clear but it's definitely not you so in that regard I think it's better to invest into a physical ETF and not a synthetical ETF and although synthetic ETFs have a lower tracking error they, they are always they are always uh, saying this so we have a less tracking error we, we follow the index uh, very closely of course because the counterparties they give you the index return so the tracking error should be lower otherwise the the counterparties are not doing what they say and promise that they would do so it's actually yeah it should be like that but yeah they they are not for most of us because yeah you don't get the actual performance that you in from the stocks you actually invest in because the reference basket when they perform better you see nothing from that and most of the time they are doing it because they won't make a synthetic ETF with a reference basket that is performing less than the actual index. So when that is the case, they are going to change the reference basket immediately and try to, to gain again more advantage themselves and not you. So if you want to invest, do it in physical ETFs, please. So in my videos, you also know that I, yeah, I, I also named the cover call ETFs, you know why I do that, and I will explain at the end of, uh, of this slide. But I only mention the sampling and the fully replicated ETFs, and the sampling ones being then both types of, uh, of the other types of physical ETFs. So the tracking error for the physical ETFs is also really minimal so you shouldn't care about the fact that the synthetical ETFs score better there it's only a few percentage points it's 0.03 percent difference so who the hell cares about that and in case you do invest in synthetic ETFs always keep this video in the back of your head and know why you are investing in them is important so if you don't know why you are buying a certain synthetic ETF sell it and buy another one that actually does what it says in its title that it does so investing into a, a certain index all the underlying stocks are from the index that's way better and I, I said it in the beginning uh, of this slide the cover call ETFs the XYLF and the QYLE I mentioned them before uh, the GPG I also mentioned so that's the world uh, ETF that uh, also delivers a monthly dividend there the basket is being built up with uh, SMP 500 constituents so the XYLF is the SMP 500 uh, covered call and the QYLE is the or the QYLD is the NASDAQ 100 and there the reference basket is built up of SMP 500 or NASDAQ 100 constituents and the GPG one there it's 85% of 
the money goes towards the, the stocks and then on those stocks they write out the covered calls to, to also deliver the extra dividend income so that they can pay out monthly dividends. So it's actually here they they do invest in into the same constituents as the S&P 500. So it's a kind of an exception, but as you know, XYLF there is only 30 million invested in it right now. So it's definitely not the complete S&P 500 that is in the reference basket. So you should always keep that in the back of your mind. So me and my wife, we are investing in this one. We know that it's not a physical ETF. We know that it's a synthetical one, but we do it because we want more cash flow in dollars so that we can buy the emergent market ETF that we have our eye on. So know why you are doing it. My wife and I, we know why we are doing it and investing in XYLF. And then the source where you can uh, find a lot of the information that I mentioned today from Vanguard. So it's from uh, Italy, www.it.vanguard and all the rest. You can pause the video and write it down. And I will put uh, the link perhaps also in the description down below. So you don't need to write it down then. And with that being said, thank you for watching this video. I hope you like this kind of content, so please uh, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Hit that like button as, as well. It helps out the channel enormously. And with that being said, thank you for watching and see you on the next one on my YouTube channel. Bye.